Hello and welcome to another episode of A Tug of Opportunity. Today, as always, with me, Andrew. Hi. And me, of course, Jose Monsalve Rosales Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and today we're talking about druids. Woo! Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. We gotta do this, Andrew. <laughs> no! So for anyone that was paying attention to my last episode, um, I I have to do um, a couple hours of public service. So I'm talking, I'm going to educate people today on the Druid <laughs> and why it's not terrible. I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> we got a, we, we got a, we got a big la- uh, backlash from our listeners. And by our listeners, I mean Heather. Yeah, about, but, <laughs> about our bottom tier classes, I, so we have I, to I, do an apology tour. I actually felt really bad when she was like, "All, oh, all oh, my favorite classes, like in the bottom five, and I went take the hint." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because I didn't even realize it until she mentioned it. I'm like, "Oh shit, that's right." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, to funny. be fair, okay, to be fair, they're not bad classes. Again. They're just well, yeah. There's there's no quote unquote bad. <laughs> bad class. Cl- yeah, right. There's nothing that you wouldn't play. Because if you listen to our previous episode, um, we were blown away by the ranger and actually all the things that you can do with it. Mm-hmm. But right. it's but it's definitely one of the things where where Dungeons and Dragons kind of takes like a step back in terms of mechanics. Yeah, you know, like it's not it's not about what your character can mechanically do. It's about what you as the player wants to do. So, right. yeah. Right. Um, so in Dungeons and Dragons, you can play anything, even if it's playing a bad class. So let's get on with the druid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but but before we we get started, um, I uh, we need to talk about uh, our drink of choice today. <laughs> You're already out that second beer, Jose. I can, I can, I can hear you slipping. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't, I don't have this. a problem. I don't. I, I probably do not have. The, the only, the only drinking problem I have is I don't have a drink right now. <laughs> do you have a beer? No, I do. I'm actually okay. working on a. I, I bought a six pack of Fat Tire, so I'm working on a second <laughs> one. So. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, well, it's like it's like I explained in the last episode. Where I'm at currently, it's a lot more expensive to build a six pack than just buy one. So yeah, I, just... I can imagine. Don't worry, they're gonna open like a hipster uh, brewery or like a hipster uh, uh, um, liquor store by there. You you know it because it's, it's it's up and coming, and all the hipsters like up and coming. I'm actually I'm actually really excited for when that day comes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So you're drinking your 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 your, your water piss. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Today I'm drinking, <clears throat> and hopefully I pronounce this a Shiner or Shiner Shinerbuck. I think it's just Shinerbuck. Shinerbuck. Yeah, I like Shiner. <laughs> <laughs> Shinerbuck. Um, Spudzel Brewery since 1909. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's brewing Shiner. It doesn't tell me how much was the alcoholic. Oh, it is. No, it's, huh. That's refreshing. From, from Texas. It's not telling me the alcohol percentage, which scares me a little bit, but that's fine. <laughs> What's the ABV of Shiner Bach? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was going to have you. I was going to have you guess, but I guess it, it doesn't. This the the Shinerbach ABV is four point four. Oh, there you go. That's actually that's actually kind of that feels low for a Bach for me. Wait, what is it? Four point four. Oh, I thought you said eight point four because I was like, yeah, okay. I think. Oh. <laughs> okay <no. laughs> so the druids, the piece of shit. <laughs> so fucking druids, right? <laughs> oh, let me let me taste this because I actually never had one of these before. Yep, that's a buck. <laughs> I remember that that reminds me. One time we went to um, World of Beer, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> and I bought a beer that I knew that I liked. Teresa bought a beer by looking at the ABV, 
And she got something. It was like a it was a Saint Bernardus triple Bach or something like that. And it if, it has like, a, if it has a saint in it, it's yes, probably really strong. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, a, the ABV was like twelve percent or something. It was, it was something ridiculous. Like it was. Like, oh man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was pretty much a spirit at that point. And it's funny because I'm sitting here drinking my beer and enjoying it. And she's over here just like kind of like scowling at it. And I'm like, you don't like it, do you? <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird, dude. Once they get past a certain level, like, yeah, like once they get to like the <clears throat> double digits, it still tastes good. But it's not as enjoyable to drink like a beer should be. Does no. that make sense? There is, I will say... Or maybe that's there, just the American side of me talking. No, 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 no. There's it. It all comes down to how well they conceal the alcohol burn for me. Mm, because mm. there had been some beers that are so alcoholic, it has like that weird vodka taste at the end, and that's yeah. disgusting. That ha- Yes, I think that's the one time I had a eleven or twelve, whatever it was. Yeah, I think that's why what threw me off because it wasn't like beer tasting it yeah it had the taste of beer but then you get the burn of like yeah straight straight alcohol and then at the end it, like when i get that aftertaste at the end like it it actually makes me rich like i just like oh, <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> I don't i do not like it there's something about oh. it um that being said i did have one i want to say it was either a double or a triple buck it was really really good it was a it was a dark uh belgian beer but it didn't taste like any alcohol like at all it was dangerously drinkable um, yeah <laughs> that's my favorite yeah and i and, and it was a bomber beer too so it was like a big like wine oh, bottle nice. beer yeah. and I, I finished the whole thing in one sitting it was nice. awesome yeah it was one, really good one day i'll record an episode with one of those see how that goes <laughs> That, so this beer has has fifteen point five percent alcohol. <laughs> that that needs to be like for the clerics where we go all out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four hour episode of just clerics. <laughs> oh, cleric! Clerics are so awesome. Yeah, I, by the I, end. I love I love clerics. I, mean, I love you, man. We were best friends because we both like clerics. You hear something in the background break. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Oh shit! Okay, all right, all right. Let's bring it back in. Let's talk about druids. Okay. <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> we got through the Rangers, and it was an enjoyable experience. Okay. Yeah, but that's but that that that's because the Ranger and the and the ranking system had like a big asterisk next to it. <laughs> Andrew, it'll be fine. Come on, let's do this. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, let's let's start with. What's up? And it's your first thing should be your, your first stat should be wisdom. Your highest stat. Jesus Christ, this beer already affected me. Your highest, oh. the highest stat should be wisdom. <laughs> your highest stat should be wisdom, followed by constitution. So right right away, that tells me, for anyone that doesn't know, Druid is a spell casting. Like 100%. You know, because your spell casting stat is your highest one, and your second highest stat is you determining how long you don't die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> how, many, how many punches can you take? So yeah, here's and, the thing. Here, cause, cause, so here's the thing. I was going through the, I was going through the PHP and I was reading it. And before this one, I did the Ranger. And the Ranger had a lot of notes for me to take. The Druid only has one. Wild is, shape. Wild shape. It's that's a, it. Wild shape will make or break a Druid. Yeah. And we'll, that's we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but let's... I want to point out the proficiencies because Druid's the only one that has this weirdness to it where the, the armor proficiency it's, it's proficient in light and medium armor and shields. Okay. That's actually pretty good for a spellcaster. Yeah. Druids will not wear armor that uses or, or, or use shields that are made of metal. Right. I forgot about that. That's like, oh, Okay, so that's one of the things. It's like if if your DM is running it raw, um, that means the no druids, scale mail, no scale mail, no splint mail, no because Not a lot. Mail. To be perfectly honest with you, if if you have a DM that like likes historical accuracy that means you're not getting a lot of armor because the google technically it's held together by bolts or some yeah. stupid crap like <laughs> right. that well i mean studded studded leather so either. i mean that's one of the things like did they really have to do that like, <laughs> i think was that really I think, necessary i think at that point it's mostly for flavor yeah that that that's like 100 flavor what did yeah. i say i get that yeah. 
<laughs> Which I mean, it, it was it was fun when was Alex the druid in Tomb of Annihilation? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He 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 will always bring that up. Like, oh, tomato, tomato. And actually, at one point, that saved him. Remember that? Mm, when it was uh, early on in the Tomb of the Nine Gods, there was a trap that was essentially a big magnet, and if, oh, you, that's if right. any, yeah. anybody who was wearing anybody who was wearing metal will get pulled if you held on to if you held on to your weapons or whatever was pulling you armor shield whatever it was and it touched the trap once it reached the trap it will disintegrate mm. and because he kept reminding me that he didn't have anything metal on him he was able to walk past and disengage the, the trap Ah, okay. So yeah. that is so so yeah, that again, incredibly niche thing that like will probably never happen. But <laughs> that was, that's still that was the only cool. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, weirdly enough, proficient in a good amount of weapons for a spellcasting class. That's you know <laughs> I mean the wizard has dagger? I think the wizard <laughs> I think the wizard has like no proficiency, doesn't it? I think it only gets daggers, doesn't he? No. Uh, no. A club. <laughs> No, the wizard gets proficiency in daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. Oh, okay. Nah, that's so it's bad. like so it's like the bare minimum of weaponry. Yeah. Um, oh, so got clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, slings, and spears. No, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it it the the justification is that the oh because it can't wear metal armor, but they can they can do they can use scimitars. The justification that it's like a um like fangs or something like that. That, that that's uh, where I read I read that somewhere. Like bone. It's made of bones. Yeah. I yeah. Or no, like 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 the scimitar represents the fangs or some crap like that. Um anyways, so what's really cool is that they do have good saving throws. Intelligence and wisdom. That's actually yep. gonna come up that's that's gonna come up a lot more than you would think. Especially yep. wisdom. Yeah. So so that's a big big up for druids is those saving throws. Um but it's all kind of downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Shut up. Uh, you're right. It's not. Um, <laughs> so, so it's spell casting. It gets cantrips and blah blah blah. Druid cantrips are kind of they're eh. fine. They they they're, do they they do what? I mean, they're not going to blow me away. But that's kind of right. Like, like, hey, anyways. you're you're a spell caster. Here's the uh, how to spell cast for dummies. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Um, they can't look. Cantrips are never meant to be a game-breaking thing, anyways. But it's right. especially, especially so with um, druids. Right. Um, one of the biggest things about druids is that they're probably considered a good healer if you focus on that, because they can cast cure wounds at like first level. And they can uh, they make uh, good berries. Yeah, they can make good berries, which is it's not really that's not super good at healing, but it would be something that's like. Um, like we have a down enemy, I'm out of spell cat or I'm out of spell slots, but I can at least give him one HP to get him back up for the time being. Or sorry, right. we have a down friend and right, 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 right. Um, well, they get poison spray. That's a cantrip. Yeah, well, like, like I said, cantrips. They're they're and they're okay. Thorn, thorn whip. Thorn whip's okay. Thorn whip is thorn whip does like one d six, but like the rest, like shillelagh is kind of. Eh. Um, Andrew, what's up? Can you explain to me wild shape? Okay. So wild shape is supposed to be at second level. Once you, once you manage to get through the grueling task that is first level with a druid <laughs> at second level, you get to magically assume the shape of a beast that you've seen before. This is, a, this is something that is going to be between the player and the DM on what tech, what quantifies as seen before. <laughs> Um, the thing about wild shape is that at second level, which is the first time you can use it, you, you get to use an animal that has a max CR of one quarter and can't have flying or swimming speed. And it gives me an example, the wolf at fourth level, it's max CR of one half, which is no, and the limitations are no flying speed, but you can use swimming speed at this, at this point. Right. Example it gives the crocodile. And then at eighth level, you get the max CR of one, no limitations. So now you can fly. And the example it gives is a giant eagle. The the thing about wild shapes is that while you're in wild shape, you assume the statistics right down to the HP of the of the creature that you are 
turning into. It is essentially warging from Game of Thrones. Right. And you can't and and, and you can't uh you can't cast magic or anything while you're in, in Wild Sheep, you, right? You can't cast magic in at first. You have oh, to be, no. Yeah, at first you can't cast magic. Um and you can't speak. Like you you, you lose the ability to talk. Um However, if you are casting a spell and it requires concentration, transforming does not break that concentration. You saw that concentration, which is which is pretty good. Not gonna lie. Um, so it's you get the HP, which is essentially like an HP buffer. So so you have that temporary HP points, and then so if you're like the wolf, which I think has like an H, uh, eight HP, if you take ten H, uh, ten damage from an attack. You lose your wild shape, and then you take that extra two uh, damage from your from the druid's HP. So you take out any leftover damage. Um, that essentially kind of boils down what wild shape is. Um, you still you still get like your your um, your saving throws and stuff like that. So there is, it's not like you completely transform into the creature. Like you still get to retain some of your quote unquote, like humanity or what, what have you. Right. Um, but it's one of those things. It's, if you're not playing the circle of the moon, wild shape is kind of okay. <laughs> right. And, and we'll, we'll get to the, we'll get to the circles in a little bit. Right. Um, at 18th level, you can, cast spells in your wild shape which is pretty cool you know it'd be really cool to be a flying eagle that can cast call lightning <laughs> lightning bolt lightning yeah. bolt <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually as far as like just base druids go that they like without going into archetypes they get wild shape uh, score improvements and then they don't get anything else until 18 yeah. it's just like, like one page <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's not even. And like 90% of the page is just wild shape. All the details. Yeah, 90% of the page is wild shape details and the other and the rest of it is artwork for the druid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty badass artwork. Yeah. And and you um you can only wild shape uh x amount of times. I'm actually trying to look up to see when that is. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you can use it twice. Uh um, press, right? Per short or long rest, okay. uh, but then once you at least when eh, once once you reach twentieth level, you can wild shape an unlimited amount of times. Oh, twentieth level! Yeah, we, we, we've all been there, right? Yeah, I, 20, I, know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm comfortable at twentieth level. You know, yeah, that's, that's that's when the game gets good. Yeah, everything else that's that's when the game actually starts. Is that level? <laughs> once you get to you have to get to twentieth level in prestige, so you can get to the post game. So, so then, <laughs> for whatever reason, at 18th level, they also give you timeless body, which that means is so weird. Which means for every 10 years that pass, your body only ages one year. Why? Why do we need that? Woo! <laughs> That's like okay, cool. I guess. Why? Why? Why is that? Why is that a thing? Like, why is that a thing you get? Why is it not part of the druid background? Why is that 18th level? That that's an excellent question. Why is it 18th level? Hold on, there's got to be like some sort of spell that could like rapid age you or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, and as far as like just the base druids go, that's pretty much it. Um, it's it, druids are heavily reliant on their subclasses, like probably more so than any other class I've seen. Uh, they're called circles. Okay, let's uh, refer to them by the appropriate name. <laughs> Uh, the the appropriate name for a druid sub who cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's start with the, with the subclasses. That's where the fun right. is. Okay. So you have you have in the player's handbook you have two circles: circle of the land and circle of the moon. Okay. It's generally considered if you're playing circle of the land, and when I say generally considered, big asterisk there, no statistics or anything like that. What is it with you and asterisks? because we need those for credibility. <laughs> it's it's generally considered if you're playing Circle of the Land, it's kind of a waste. <laughs> like, almost everybody plays Circle of the Moon. Yeah. So let's go down Circle of the Land. So let me read the flavor real quick. 
The circle of the land is made up of mystics and sages who safeguard ancient knowledge and rights through the vast oral tradition. What? Through a vast oral tradition, these druids meet within sacred circles of trees or standing stones to whisper primal secrets in druid druidic. The circles which wisest members. Sorry, I'm reading this sideways because of my mic. One second. Uh, the circle wisest members pres presides as the chief priestess of communities that hold to the old faith and serve as the advisors of the rulers of of the ruler to the rulers of the folk. As a member of the circle, your magic is influenced by the land where you were initiated into the circle's mysterious rites. So, and they do have a table for like Arctic, coast, d desert, forest, grassland, mountain, swamp, and underdark. Which right. is, it, it, it's kind of cool and it kind of re reminds me of the maesters from Game of Thrones. Right. And it, it's one of those things, uh, um, the Circle of the Land Druid, it's not, okay, I, I said it was useless before, but that's not true. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like nine times out of ten, I'll be a Circle of the Moon. Circle of the Land, it is useful. Um, just not as useful as like any other spellcaster. <laughs> really. Right. 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 <laughs> um, so, while you were while you were going on about the circles, I was actually googling uh, what's a five E druid timeless body useful, and uh, the general consensus is no. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, it's it's it's, it's like one hundred percent fluff. But I thought maybe there was like a spell or something that like rapidly ages you. But which no, kind of which, which kind of sucks because eighteenth level and you get that like that's so disappointing. Yeah, that's here you go. You get the ability to not age. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wow. whoop a do. Yay, my fictional character gets to not <laughs> age. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah, so back to the Circle of Land. <clears throat> uh, the first thing you get is a bonus cantrip. When you choose the Circle of Second Level, you learn one additional Druid cantrip, which is kind of cool. And then you get, after that, you get Natural Recovery. I don't know if you want to go over that. Yeah, so starting at level 2, you regain some of your magical energy by sitting in meditation, blah, blah, blah. During a short rest, you choose to ex you choose expended spell slots to cover, to recover. The spell slots can have a combined level that is equal to or less than half your druid level rounded up. And then these slots can be 6 or higher. You can use this feature once again once you finish a long rest. So, it's kind of like the um, recovering the spell slots for sorcerers. Um... Okay. But, it's one of, but it's one of those things it's like let's see your spell slots can have a combined level that is equal to or less than half your druid level rounded up so it's essentially if you're level 2 and you meditate during a short rest you can regain one level 1 slot or if you're level 3 you can regain a level 2 and a level 1 slot or if you're level 4 two level 2s or four level 1s uh, you know what I can actually no 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 actually sorry I forgot to have it <laughs> You had to have the uh, druid level, so eh, I mean, yeah, like most of the time, I mean, I guess if you if you're desperate and if you're in a desperate situation, it kind of works. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, like I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a short rest or a long rest. You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> it I can, seems, I, it seems I can a little see, redundant. I can see this being really useful in a dungeon setting where it's like, okay, we mm. use up all of our resources and the boss is coming up. Let's just go in this room real quick, barricade the doors. I just just give me like thirty minutes to pop a quick snooze, and I can regain something. <laughs> at least, you know, a little bit of something. Right, right. So, right. Three minutes um, to fall asleep, twenty-seven minutes to to recover. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I can. That actually seems more useful to me than than not. So okay, I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah. But then after that, uh, do you get the circle spells? Which just looking at these, like some of them are pretty cool. Do these, mm, what does it say? It says, uh, your mystical connection to the land infuses you with the ability to cast certain spells. Third, fifth, seventh, and ninth level, you gain access to circle spells connected to the land where you became druid. Choose the, uh, choose that land. Arctic Coast, Desert Gallery went to that. So, wait, are these, are these like spells that are not usually in the druid uh, spells list? That's my question. You know what? That's actually an excellent question. Let because me... otherwise, like, why? I mean, I guess it wouldn't count towards your 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 spells already. So, well, let me see. Let me. I am going to do a quick um, cross. I'll go reference. down. I'll, I'll go down the the spells uh, as you as you search. So, if you pick the Arctic, 
uh, at level three, you get a whole person and spike spike growth. At fifth level, you get sleet storm and slow. At seventh level, you get freedom of movement, ice storm and ice storm. At ninth level, you get communicate with nature and cone of cold. So these are all very thematic. That's what I'm seeing here. Okay, so some of these are in the Druid spell list, like the Spike Growth and Hold Person, they are in the Druid spell list. The Cone of Cold, as far as I know, Cone of Cold is not in the Druid spell okay, list. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a so nice mix. So Sleet Storm, Sleet Storm is in the Druid spell list, but there is some, okay, so there are some of these that's like Commune with Nature that's obviously in the Druid spell list. Right, 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 right. But so there are some of these, like I think Insect Plague is not in the Druid spell list. Um, right. So yeah, so this this is this is the this is kind of like the the cleric thing where it's like they're giving you extra spells that are outside of your yeah. spell list. So it is. So in that respect, it is more useful, you know. Like so, so you do get a little bit more um, variety <laughs> and a little bit more like juice as a spellcaster. Yeah. Um, obviously. Some of these are better than others. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, what I like about these is that they're very thematic. So for like mm. the desert one, you're essentially like, you have the powers of like the mummy. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. You know, and then so with our take and coast, you have like mirror image and like mirror the water and all that stuff. I, I, I actually really like how grassland is very stealth based. Like you get pass without trace. Haze, yeah. Invisibility. So that's, that's very much that. That's actually kind of cool. I do appreciate that. Yeah, um, I, I dig it. I mean, I, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can run with the land, uh, circle of the land. Yeah, I'd probably, level, level one through five, I wouldn't go past that. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> just, just for a little bit, so I can taste it. Well, I mean, I mean, to be perfectly honest, with you, I probably level one through nine, just so I can get like those extra good spells at the end. Um, yeah, I can definitely see with a certain amount of flavor, a certain amount of tweaking, a circle of the land yeah. druid is kind of cool, you know, in its own respect. Um, and then you get you get land stride after uh, level six, which we already covered in the ranger spell. It's yeah. essentially you move through difficult terrain with no with no movement or no cost of movement, and you can move through <laughs> non magical plants, and you get um, saving uh, advantage on saving throws against like entangle spells, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So and then, and pretty useful. And then at level ten, you do nature's ward. Uh, which is it's kind of cool. You can't be charmed or frightened by fey elementals, and you're immune to poison and disease. Is this the same as the ranger? I feel like... No, no, no? nature's ward uh-huh. not the same because they uh, no, they they didn't get nature's ward, which is one of the things like charmed or frightened by elementals or fey. I don't really. It has to be specific. Like it, yeah, you have, you have to know that that's the adventure you're going in. The immunity to poisons or disease, though, that's handy. Yes, for sure. Because because immunity to poison damage is super good, and then um, a nature and then at fourteen you get nature sanctuary, which I kind of like. Let's see, fourteen level creatures in the natural world sense your connection to nature and become hesitant to attack you. When a beast or plant creature attacks you, that druid must uh, the creature must make a wisdom saving throw against the druid spell DC. On a failed save, the creature must choose a different target or attack automatically misses you. On a successful save, the creature is immune to this effect for twenty four hours. Okay, yeah, you You're know sense- that. You're essentially yeah. Ron Swanson. <laughs> what do you mean? How so? He's, you know how he's like all like nature's man. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that, that's, have, what, that's what the circle of the druid, <laughs> circle of the lane is. Ron Swanson. I can see this being more useful against plant creatures as opposed to animals, especially at 14th level. Yeah. Because um, at 14th level, you're not you're not worrying about animals like that's <laughs> that, they're a non threat. You can still worry about like it's a shambling mound of a plant. Um, I think so. I want to say it is. It, I would be shocked if it isn't. Um, but yeah, no, you'll, you'll be dealing with more of those kinds of things. Than, than you would be with like a bear. Well, it says it says creatures of the natural world. It doesn't say. No, it does. When, when a beast or plant creature attacks you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. It's not as cool as I thought. No, like I said, it's not. It's not super cool, but I can definitely. Yeah, Shambling Mound's a a large plant. Mm. So yeah, I can definitely see. I can, I can definitely see that be more useful against plant creatures. So, so that's so that's essentially a circle of the land. You're. You know, you know the land that you're walking, and and your spells are themed accordingly. 
-hmm. and you have no trouble, you know, crossing it, crossing the land. So I mean, and don't forget, you can still wild shape. It's not that's true. Yeah, it's not phenomenal, but you could still wild shape. All right. So all right. So so, tell me a little bit about the circle of the moon. Then you were raving about it. So the circle of the moon is okay. Circle of the moon is all about wild shape. It is like going straight into wild shape and it's it's investing hard into that. It's take it kind of takes a backseat in terms of spell casting. So combat wild shape, when you choose a circle in second level, you gain the ability to use wild shape as a bonus action instead of a oh, regular that's, action. That, that's, that's useful. Important. Yeah. Additionally, while you're transformed by wild shape, you can use a bonus action to expend one spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level of your spell slot expended. So there's okay. that. Now, the big one is circle forms. Circle forms, your right of circle grants you the ability to transform into more dangerous animal shapes. <laughs> Starting at second level, you can use your wild shape to transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as uh, one. You ignore the max CR column in the beast shapes table, but you must abide by the other limitations there. Mm. Starting at sixth level, you can transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as your level drew divided by three, rounded down. Okay, so now, you essentially this like, is, you for skip. a low level party, this is awesome because at level yeah. one, or sorry, at level two, two, you can transform into a brown bear or a dire wolf, which essentially makes you a killing machine yeah. <laughs> at level two. Because I was looking at the table earlier and it was like eighth level and you can barely make it to like a CR of one. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, no, with a sickle form, I start at second level, you can make it up to level one. I mean, to a CR of one. But then what? what's the why would you not take circle of the moon? Well, the, the reason why you wouldn't take Circle of the Moon is because you don't get... Because the Circle of the Land spells, they don't count against the spells that you know and prepare. Oh, okay. So, yes, so, that, that makes so sense. So it's one of those things like, do you want to be more spell casting or do you want right. to be more like into the thick of it? Which, if you're a Circle of the Land, you're... Well, I wouldn't say your Wild Shape is useless, but it's going to take more of like a mechanical side to it. Where like, right, you know, right, right. Like, I'm going to be a snake and I'm going to weave my way through the crowd to blah, 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 or something like that. Whereas if you're a circle of the moon, you know, you're going to, you're essentially beast boy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I hear you. Okay. Well, it, well, that, that, that makes it, that makes for me specifically, that makes circle of the moon a lot more appealing. <laughs> yeah, than, exactly. Uh, and I think, I, I, I think that's the bigger appeal there. Yeah. Yeah, for um, sure. Which rounded down at 20th level, you get to be a an animal of CR6, which is mm. actually surprisingly good, <laughs> especially if you yeah. can wall shape indefinitely. Yeah, exactly. And then and then at level six, you get primal strike. Yeah. So that means all of your attacks while you're in beast form counts as magical for the uh, for the uh, purpose of overcoming resistance and dealing immunity to non magical attacks and damage, which is badass uh, in it, in it of itself. Yeah. So, yeah. so now as a dire wolf, you can rip into a actual werewolf <laughs> and eat its guts. Yeah. So and then at level, level ten, you get yeah. elemental wild shape, elemental. which is kind of cool. You yeah. uh, you can spend two uses of the wild shape at the same time to transform into an air elemental, earth, fire, or water elemental. So essentially, and and remember, I think you only get two wild shapes. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so before you reach level 20, you can only get two wild shapes per short or long rest. So it's like you want to use your two wild shapes to make two separate animals, or do you just want to become living fire? Right. <laughs> you know, which again, useful. You know, that because if you're a water elemental, you can just like slip under the cracks of doors or something like that. Or if you're a rock element or earth elemental, you can become a siege weapon That's and break true. down that door. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't even think about it that way. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Thousand Forms. By 14th level, you have learned to use magic to alter your physical form in more subtle ways. You can cast Alter Self spell at will. That's pretty useful, too. Yeah. And at so level 14, that's pretty low. Yeah, that's nice. So it's really, it, it's really it's one of those things like which, which part of the druid do you want to be? Like, you know, do you want to be 
like the spell casting or do you want to be the wild shape you know and it's it's actually now now we kind of went into it it's actually a pretty even split between the two yeah um, it's not it's not it's not necessarily the two weighted on one side like the like the ranger was and the thing about it is is that i think the only reason why a lot of people go with circle the moon over circle the land is because at that point why why not just like play a wizard or something like yeah. that you know what i'm saying you know yeah, like exactly like, like that that's just more of like a i want to play a nature i want to play radagast that's it right so. yeah no yeah and and you know when you think of druid most of the time you're thinking about nature and animals and like shape changing and like maybe controlling some animals so when you see that you can actually like transform into the animals and become the animal then it's it's a lot more thematic right more classically thematic so people usually yeah i can see that yeah that's one of the I, I mm-hmm. things like the druid it's actually in terms of like flavor and lore and stuff like that it's actually like i think one of the cooler classes i, I like the idea of being like a worshiper of the old gods or what have you yeah you know <laughs> so but i mean it's got if i'm gonna play the druid it's gotta be circle of the moon yeah yeah no, i hear you for sure okay so we cover the php which i mean only two cla- i just realized that it's only two circles huh mm-hmm. well the ranger yeah. only had two subclasses yeah i guess so well circle of the moon you know once again it has a weak one and a, and a stronger one uh mm-hmm. for the class but now let's move and see what wizards of the coast did for sanathar's guide are you ready yeah. Well, like I said, in the PHB, it was a pretty even split. Do you want spell casting or do you want beast changing? So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So we have two in here: Circle of Dreams and Circle of Shepherd. Let me let me read the the Senator note on these. Uh, I don't know. I don't dream because I don't sleep. I'm always awake, so no one can ever sneak up on me. If I dream, they will be bigger dreams than yours, though. Because my head is bigger. The Senator. The Senator. All right. So, <laughs> Circle right. of the Dream. You want to read that flavor? Yes. <laughs> Druids who are a member of Circle of Dreams hail from regions that have strong ties of the Fae while in its dreamlike realms. The Druids' guardianship of the natural world makes for natural alliances between them and good aligned Fae. <laughs> These Druids seek to fill out the worlds with. These druids seek to fill the world with dreamy wonder. Their magic mends wounds and brings joy to downcast hearts. And the realms they protect are gleaming, fruitful places where dreams and reality blur together and where the weary can find rest. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so imagine a circle of dreams, Kalistar. What's a Kalistar? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's the... Uh, hold on. It's, uh, I think that was in Volos. Oh. No, wasn't that in uh in the not the Baldur's Gate? How oh, about here? Wasn't it like the the newest book? Oh wait, was it? Oh yeah, it was in the uh, Eberron. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're essentially like dream people that have been broken from the dream world, and they have uh, a fae spirit within them. So imagine like a circle of the dream druid that like um relies on the dream world. And somebody who was broken away from it, but was able was is still able to like pull from it, and just wants okay. to get back. That right there is like a whole like character development. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so so immediately just from reading the flavor text, I kind of get the idea that Circle of Dreams is meant to be a more fae wild druid, yep. support, so. health, healing, protection type uh, druid. Okay, so yeah. at second level, you get the balm of the summer court. Yeah, what the so, second level? Uh, oh wait, where's my notes? Um, <laughs> I just wrote down Healy Boys. <laughs> so uh, essentially what it is, is you become imbued with the blessings of the summer court. And then you get, you are, uh, let me just read it. You are a font of energy that offers respite from injuries. You have pool of fate energy represented by the number of D6s equals to your druid level. As a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 120 feet of you and spend the number of those dice equal to half your druid level or less. Now uh, roll the spend dice and add them together. The target regains that many hits. So that's just basically you get to heal people. Yeah, it's a free healing without using a. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the first thing you get at uh, second level, and then you jump to sixth level and you hit. You get Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. This is actually well, pretty cool. Well, hold right. on. Let's not let, let's not forget the fact the target also gets one temporary hit point per 
per die spent. Oh, yeah. Some all detail towards the end. Look at that. Mm-hmm. All right. You want to read the uh, Hearth of the Moonlight? Yeah. At sixth level, home can be wherever you are. During a short or long rest, you invoke the shadowy power of the gloaming court to help guard your respite. At the start of the rest, you touch a point in space, an invisible 30-foot radius sphere of magic appears centered at that point. Total cover blocks the sphere. While while within the sphere, you and your allies gain a plus five to dexterity and wisdom, and any uh, dexterity, stealth, wisdom, perception, and any light from open flames in the in the sphere, campfire, torches, blah blah blah, isn't available outside of it. The sphere vanishes at the end of the rest while you're leaving the sphere. So isn't that, that cool? what's up? Say, isn't that cool? That is actually really handy. Essentially, that would again. This is something that's like if you do want to take a long rest in a dungeon, <laughs> you know, like if you. If if it's really down to that, and you're like, okay, we just got to spend eight hours in this dungeon. We got to really barricade the thing. Right. Drew, get working on that hearth of moonlight and shadow. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, and it says it's, it's essentially all darkness and nothing, no light that uh, is from within inside the sphere shows outside. So that's pretty cool. It keeps uh, people at bay. Plus, if somebody's like, you know, passive perception slash. Um, uh, slash uh, keeping guard or whatever, they get a plus five to their um, wisdom perception. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, this is this is a very um, I can already tell immediately. This is a much more support class druid, which is okay because I think that's kind of where the druid is good at is kind of just filling in the gaps. You know. Also, also, if you think about it, there's not really that many support cl- like dedicated support classes. No, in there's PHP. Really- in the PHB, no, there's really not. Um, yeah. that, that, that's it. A lot, a lot of the classes are kind of not meant to be in the front lines, but they can be. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> they can take some off, hits. Often played that way. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, at tenth level, you get hidden path, which um, for that one, what did I write down? Uh, you can teleport up to sixty feet. Yeah, as a bonus action of your turn, you can teleport at six feet to an ally space you can see. Alternatively, you can use an action to teleport one willy creature you touch up to 30 feet to an occupied space yep. you can see. That's really handy. That's mm-hmm. really, that's really good for getting out of a bad place in a pinch. Yep. And not just <laughs> you, but like your friends as well. That's something I can I can definitely see like <laughs> Oh, like oh shit! We you know we triggered the trap, and now there's fire filling the room, and the druid's like, "Nah, man, you're good," and just like touches you on the shoulder, and you just like right out of the room. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's super handy. So uh, at level fourteen, you get Walker in Dreams, uh, which is also pretty cool if you want to read it. Uh, yeah. But essentially, you get to cast uh, Dream, Scrying, or Teleportations, or. Without expending a spell slot or using without spell, yeah, that's the important part. Without spelling a uh, spell slot, this use of teleportation uh, circle is special. Rather than opening a portal to a permanent teleportation circle, it opens the portal to the last location when you finish the long rest on your current plane of existence. <laughs> if you haven't taken a long rest on your current plane, the spell failed but isn't wasted. That's actually pretty handy, and that's essentially for anyone that's played Dark Souls. There's an item in the game that teleports you back to the bonfire you've been to. That's what this is. <laughs> yep. So, so I can see this being really handy saying like, Hey, let's just take a long rest in this really safe spot. But why? Just trust me. Let's just take a long rest in the <laughs> safe spot. <laughs> yeah, just, 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 you know, right here, right now, it might come in useful later, but yeah, no, the circle of the dream is, I like it because it's a little bit more of a, it's, I always find it really interesting when people try to theme things around the dream world or the Fae and all that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this one brings it up together really nicely when it comes to being a support class. Well, um, what what I really like about it is that it's it's based on the Feywild, but it's not like the trickery aspect of the Feywild. Because like a lot of people, a lot of people are like, oh, don't forget, people in the Feywild are kind of dicks. But it's like, right. yeah, but it's also like supposed to be like kind of like a utopian like beautiful sort of a thing and right. this kind of this kind of leans into that I, i'm i'm really i'm really digging the fact that it's like no nah, not not everyone in Feywild is an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's pretty cool it can be it can lead to a lot of nifty uh role-playing opportunities i guess you could say especially if you're dealing with the Feywild. 
Also, also the spell Dream is pretty handy. Like it's. I it's, actually don't know anything about that spell. It what it is that I think you can like, if I remember correctly. I'm 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 gonna look it up while I'm getting this wrong. But I think <laughs> you, you can like astral project yourself into somebody else's dream and be like, you know, remember and stuff like that. And, ah, okay. I see. You can you can send like a message. Okay, so the dream is a fifth level illusion. Spell shapes a creature's dreams. Choose a creature known to you as a target of the spell. Target must be in the same place as existence. It doesn't it doesn't creatures that don't sleep aren't contacted by this. If the target is asleep, the messenger appears in the target dreams and converse with the target as long as it remains asleep. The messenger can also shape the environment of the dream, creating landscapes, objects, and images. The messenger can emerge from the trance at any time, ending the effects of the spell early. <laughs> You can make the messenger appear monstrous and terrifying to the target. If you do, the messenger can deliver a message in no more than 10 words, and the target must make a wisdom saving throw. On the failed save, echoes of the phantasmal monstrosity spawn a nightmare that lasts the duration of the target's sleep and prevents the target from gaining any benefits of a long rest. In addition, when the target wakes up, it takes 3d6 uh, psychic damage. Jeez. Yeah, so you can you can essentially use it to be like... I need to get a message to the king, like right now, you know, but let's like, you know, so I'm going to go into his dream and like, hey, don't uh, don't eat that croissant in the morning. It's poison or <laughs> or or be like, you know, because there are there are a lot of spell casting, um, you know, big, bad, evil guys and stuff like that. So you're going to be like, well, this dude used up this this amount of spells, but he got away. I'm going to go into his dream, fuck with him a bit, and he's not going to have those spells at the end of that long rest. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of, like, mess with him on that. Because right. because enemies are also affected by long rests and short rests, too. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I can definitely see... You, like, you, you kind of have to think outside the box, but I can definitely see uses for it. It's, it's, hey, man. It's, I, know, you know. I know plenty of people who are more than happy to play a support, and I think this this specific subclass really caters to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Circle of Dreams is, is, I wouldn't say it's great, but it is pretty cool. It is, yeah. uh, like I said, fills in a gap. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but other than, and then from the Circle of Dreams, we go to Circle of the Shepherd. Yes. So, um, you want to read the flavor text? Yeah. So, Druids, oh, wait, no, didn't I, uh, didn't I read the flavor text for Circle of Dreams? Oh, yeah, let me read the Shepherd. Hold on. Uh, Druids of the Circle of the Shepherd commune with the spirits of nature, specifically the spirit of beast and the fae, and call to those spirits for aid. These druids recognize that all living things play a role in the natural world, yet they focus on protecting animals and fae and fae creatures that have difficulty defending themselves. Shepherds, as they are known, see such creatures as as their charges. They ward off monsters from threaten from, from monsters that threaten them. Rebuke hunters, rebuke hunters that who kill more prey than necessary, and prevent civilization from uh, encroaching on rare animal habitats on on sites sacred to the fae. Many of these druids are happy as far from cities and towns, content to content to spend their lays their days in the company of animals and the fae. Damn, this is a long one. Fae creatures of the wilds. Members of this circle become adventurers to oppose forces that train their charges or to seek knowledge and power that will help them safeguard their charges better. Whenever these druids go, the spirits of the of the wilderness are with them. So immediately this gives me the idea that this is supposed to be the druid that is going to chain themselves up against a tree and protest <laughs> of like deforestation and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, Peace Corps, uh, Super Hippie, yeah, not yep, I see. Yeah, like the ASPCA kind of, like, I wouldn't go yeah. so far as say PETA because they're not firebombing research labs, but... Right, right, but I mean, like, the first thing, the very first thing you get is speech speech of the woods, which essentially allows you to talk to most beasts. Yeah, it's essentially uh, uh, speak with animal, yeah. like, more or less. It, um, you learn to speak, write, and read Sylvan, which is actually a lot more handy than you think. Because yeah. there's there are certain Fey Wild creatures that only speak Sylvan, and it's not That's Elven. True. It's different. It's different than Elven. So, um, then on top of that, you can you can pretty much communicate with the animals. They they don't one hundred percent get what you're saying, but they know the gist of what you're saying. Right, right. Um, you can read you can read their emotions and their movement to like figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. And so this would be really handy for. <laughs> 
like if you want to like talk to a squirrel to like be like, hey, can you like just check ahead and see what's up there? <laughs> you know, just kind of <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah. But the cool the cool thing about that is is that it says it does not it does not grant you friendship with beasts, <laughs> which so you can kind of you can like talk <laughs> down animals, which I you know I can see being cool for like role playing aspects, right? Or you can have like a like a like a dick squirrel. Yeah, you know, just be like, hey, can you can you scout ahead and say, no, fuck you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Doing my own thing over here. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to say something really bad. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm not going to do it. And then after that, you get Spirit Totem at, well, actually, at level two as well, uh, which allows you to call forth nature spirits to influence the world around you. With bonus action, you can magically summon and incorporate Incorpore, incorporeal, incorporeal, spirit. Incor- incorporeal, In- incorporeal spirit to a point you can see within 60 feet of you. The spirit creates an aura of, in the 30 foot radius around the point. It counts as neither a creature nor an object, though it has the spectral asp- appearance of a creature it represents, which is kind of cool. As a bonus action, you can move the spirit up to 60 feet to a point you can see. Uh, the spirit persists for one minute or until you're incapacitated. So you get uh, a couple different ones. You get the bear. You get the. Uh, you get a couple different ones. You get the bear, the hawk, and the unicorn. Why are you? Yeah, which is like, well, it's, <laughs> it's Feywild. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's like it's like it's like bear, hawk, unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah. So, like the the bear spirit grants you and your allies uh, its might and endurance. Each creature of your choice in the aura when the spirit appears gains temporary hit points equal to five plus your druid level. That's pretty nifty. In mm-hmm. addition, you know, in addition, you and your allies gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws while in the aura. Now, now keep in mind, this isn't coming from the druid. This effect is not coming from the druid. It's coming from that spectral animal that you right. cast it into right. the world. So it doesn't even have to be on you. Right. You can just like, hey, my allies are in the thick of it. Let's uh, ghost bear show up here, <laughs> you know. Yeah, pretty much. And then um, you, can also, you can also get the hawk spirit, which yep. is the hawk spirit is the consummate hunter, aiding you and your allies with its keen sight. When a creature makes an attack roll against the target and the spirit aura, you can use your reaction to grant advantage on that attack roll. That's really handy. Yep. And in addition, you and your allies have advantage on wisdom perception checks while in the aura. That's so. Cool. Yeah, so I I can actually okay. So bear is more defense, hawk is more offense. Yes, and then you got unicorn, which okay, the, <laughs> the unicorn <laughs> the unicorn spirit lends its protection to those nearby. You and your allies gain advantage on all ability checks made to detect creatures in the spirit aura. In addition, if you cast a spell using a spell slot that restores hit points to any creatures inside or outside that aura, each creature of your choice in the aura also regains hit points equal to your druid level. So, so it's a healing, it's a healing boy. Yeah, it's a yeah. So it's like so it's like you have offense, defense, and then support, like like healing. Um, this is <laughs> this is only good for if you are true of heart. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. Did you see you see the Sanathar's note. If I can turn into something else, I wouldn't because everything else is inferior to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, uh, da- who was who that? Who was that Greek guy? Uh, the Greek philosopher Diogenes or something like that? Uh, I guess. Did you hear about that? No. Okay. He was, his, he was I wasn't, his, I wasn't around in ancient. Uh... <laughs> well, he was this, uh, Greek philosopher that, uh, pretty much made the school of cynicism. Ah. And, and there was a famous encounter where, uh, uh, Alexander the Great like approaches him and he's just like resting under a tree or something like that and Diogenes says some like uh, like you know hey fuck off like you're in my like you're in my son kind of a thing uh-huh. and Alexander the Great goes if I could be any man I would be like Diogenes and he goes yeah if I could be any man I'd be me too now go away <laughs> 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 Beautiful. <laughs> so sorry, I just little little caveat there. Um, all right. So then at sixth level, you get the my. Okay. So hold on. Before we go to the mighty summoner, the spirit totem is actually pretty handy. Um, yeah. ag- again, this leans more into the support aspect of a druid. Which, not complaining. If anything, I think there needs to be more support classes in five e. I agree. Um, so. 
Yeah, I actually, I'm actually really digging it. That's that's pretty handy and cool looking at the same time. So uh, let's see. And then at six level, to get the Mighty Summoner. Starting at six level, beast and fae that you conjure are more resilient than normal. Any beast or fae summoned or created by a spell you cast gains the following benefits. The creature appears with more hit dice than normal. Two extra hit points per hit dice it has. And the damage from its natural weapons is considered magical for the purposes of overcoming immunity and resistance to non-magical attacks and damages. Nice. So, so you just get a, buff, a buffed up uh, summon. Yeah, which is actually pretty cool because one of their spells is Conjure. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on. They actually have a really good spell for that. Uh, hold on a second. Oh my god. Dead air, dude. Unbelievable. Conjure animals. That's what it is. You can either make a a swarm of animals or one really big animal so and it's like it's not something to sneeze at like you can conjure like a con like a giant constrictor snake to help you in combat nice. so yeah that would be super handy with the mighty summoner um circle or mighty summoner it, aspect my bad and then at 10th level you get guardian spirit Let's see. Your spirit, your, your spirit totem safeguards the beast and fey that you that you call forth with your magic. When a beast or fey that you summon or created with a spell ends its turn in the spirit totem, in the spirit totem's aura, the creature regains a number of hit points equal to half of your druid level. That's pretty that's, useful. That no, that's not pretty useful. That's awesome, actually. That is so so, so useful. That's like so at the end of every turn. So if if you're using this at tenth level, at the end of every turn you gain five health. Yep. Like that's I mean that's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean and I mean, you and you and you can move that aura too. Yeah. I mean, granted, you know you're going to be taking more damage than well, you might be taking more damage than five hit points for a round, but still that that little you know that little bit little extra at the end, no, nothing to sneeze at. That's, yeah, for that's, sure. That's, that's pretty cool. It, that's pretty much like a. Uh, like a regeneration feat, but a little toned down. Um, and then at level 14, they get Faithful Summons. That uh, The nature spirits you commune with protect you when you are most defenseless. If you're reduced to zero hit points or incapacitated against your will, you immediately gain the benefits of Conjure Animals if it would cast as a ninth level spell slot. Yep. <laughs> it summons four beasts of your choice that are challenge rating two or lower. The Conjure Beasts appear within 20 feet of you. If they receive no commands from you, they protect you from harm and attack your foes. The spell lasts for one hour, requiring no concentration or until, or until you dismiss it. So essentially... That's if That's you cool. go down, yeah. If you go down, you just summon animals at ninth level. At ninth level, which which it it, it says what what that means. That's essentially what the ninth level version of that spell is. Yeah, uh, uh, I believe so. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just to give you an idea of what a CR two animal is, hold on, because I know because I know a. Uh, I know a brown bear is a CR1, which I would be scared if four brown bears just popped out of the room when he died. <laughs> oh, shit. So uh, a polar bear is a CR2 animal. Um, <laughs> <whew. laughs> that, would be, that would be terrifying. A hunter shark, for whatever reason, if you're underwater. A four hunter hunt shark. Four hunter sharks could just pop out of a druid. <laughs> 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 Wait, how many? Four of them. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Start> flopping up. <laughs> you know we're on land, right? <laughs> he got scared. He got he got taken down. He didn't. He just reacted, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> question. Uh, a giant constrictor. A giant constrictor snake is CR two. A giant elk is CR two. So yeah, I can actually see this. That's actually pretty. <laughs> that would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because I because I would. I personally would flavor it in such a way that it's like they don't magically appear. They just like, like come out, <laughs> like come out of the druid. <laughs> oh, beautiful! Oh god, oh, shit. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty much what the druid gets. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, no, that's that's good. That's actually that's that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not half bad. That's for sure. I don't think. No. I, well, I think if they wouldn't put a bad class in here. <laughs> no, and like I said, the druid. It's not. Well, now now that we went over the um, 
the Xanathar's Guide. It's not a bad class. There are no bad. Heather, listen to me. There are no bad classes in five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, it's it's still not my first pick. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not for that, sure. There, there are reasons why I'm, I'm not playing a druid. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> um, I do think it's really cool that they also... Uh, pretty much gave you like a breakdown in Xanathar's guide. Like, oh, hey, if you know, if if you want to be like a circle of the land or something like that, here are some, here are the the animals you automatically know. I saw that, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's pretty cool. I like that idea. It's like and a that, quick reference. Yeah, and, and, and this also would kind of help um, players that didn't know what they could or couldn't be, you know? Yep. yep. Like, uh, like, I bet you they didn't know they could be a fucking triceratops <laughs> or anything like that. So yeah, oh, no, man. It, it's really handy. I, I really like that. Yeah. So do you have anything else for this episode? Um, no, once again, this is kind of, kind of like a lesser effect of the Ranger. It's sort of turned me around on the Druid. It's still, it still kind of retains its place in the list for me for certain reasons, but right. right. You know, I don't I don't hate it. I don't think it's garbage. I know me and you made the joke that's trash. Right. But, but no, I mean I don't, I don't I, I, and I think I don't feel like I need to <laughs> say this, but like we're just kidding. Yeah. Like most 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 of these classes are all pretty awesome. It's just yeah, you know, it's a different flavor for everyone. <laughs> and and it shouldn't surprise anybody, especially Jose, to know that I do have a character made for a druid <laughs> um, i'm expecting i'm expecting that character for each subclass please and thank you dude if you really want me to no if really, don't do it uh, all right i'm, do, I'm doing it what right now not? oh god <laughs> oh man you can play yeah. the after music on that part <laughs> oh god oh god <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, that's the thing. That's what we have. Uh, that's all we have for you this episode. So thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for listening to our ramblings. And uh, I hope you learn a little bit about the uh, Druid and all its cool subclasses and how uh, useful they could be, actually. Yeah, um, now I got, I have to, how, class. I need to know after we're done with this episode, I need to know how long we talked about Druid so I can talk to my <laughs> parole officer about it and log it in my hours. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'll log in your hours. I'll sign it for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're gonna be a witness to this. Yeah, I'm gonna be a witness to this. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed what uh, what we brought, um, make sure to uh, leave us a review or comment on YouTube. Or if you're on iTunes or Spotify, just rate us, give a comment, see what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, and if, and if you, you have if you have a cool idea for a druid, um, you know, let us know. See what uh, you like to. We would like to have an outside perspective because. Uh, Andrew is always wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> T- Teresa's always there to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Kristen always reminds me too. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope you have a you guys have a great rest of your week, and uh, make sure to uh, like us and follow us, and uh, on all the social medias, all of them, like literally all of them, all of them. <laughs> Just all of them. even the weird Russian and Chinese ones. We're there too. Yeah, or even oh, wait. I'm wait. What's what's? I need some like weird <laughs> offshoot Chinese Facebook. <laughs> oh, you know there's one there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. All right, all right. You guys have a good rest of your week. Bye. Right, bye. Oh my God, Craig, leave, please get out. <laughs> Craig, get the fuck out of here.